Oh, hi. As I'm sitting here in Greece, I look at my uh, laptop and I see the dynamic wallpaper that was introduced with macOS Mojave. And it's beautiful. It changes the picture throughout the day dynamically. And every time you look at it, it looks a little bit different. But when I look to my window, Damn, I could actually make a better dynamic wallpaper than the one that comes with a Mac with the view from my window. And as you know, on this channel, I share all the digital life hacks I find out. So let's get started. I cannot help but wonder how would that beautiful view look as a dynamic wallpaper? So the process of making a dynamic wallpaper basically consists of three different steps. Step number one is capturing the images. And basically we need six to 16 different images with the same perspective from the same point with different lighting conditions in different parts, different times of the day. Second step is uh, to align all those images because the images are not gonna be captured perfectly at the same spot we need to align all of them together and we'll, we'll use Photoshop for this. And the third step is to combine all of them into a file that the operating system can read and choose the right image based on a set of rules that we define inside that file as well. And we'll use uh, a third party piece of software for that as well. So let's start with the first step. The first step is to capture the images. And for that, we're gonna be using a drone. Turning that on, turning on the down, turning on the remote. Okay, next we switch the down to hyperlapse mode. In hyperlapse, we can define waypoints. Waypoints allow us to mark uh, the different locations where the down will stop. You can set waypoints only while the down is in flight. However, the DJI Fly app remembers the last waypoints you have defined. So once you define it once, you can just repeat it easily by loading them again. So let's take off. And we can load the hyperlapse that was already defined. Okay, by clicking the little icon here, you can load the previous uh, waypoint. So let's have it go to the first location we already defined. The drone will go to each one of the defined positions, stop there, take a picture, and move on to the next spot. In this case, that process will take 11 minutes. It's important to know that each one of the images being saved is both saved as a video of a time-lapse of the whole uh, shot and as a raw image of each individual picture. And that's exactly what we're going to be using for the dynamic wallpaper. Okay, you don't have to use a drone. You can use just a tripod like this one. Uh, well, maybe not like this one, but any tripod. And even just use your cell phone with it, right? Okay. as long as you set the camera in the same place every time. That's one shot. 
16 more to go. Okay, now that we have all the images, we need to align them to be as close to each other as possible. And for that, we will use auto align in Photoshop. Luckily, DJI uh, in the drones saves each hyperlapse in a separate folder. So we can take the first image or whatever image you want from the time lapse in each folder and combine them. We take the first one in the first folder and open it with Photoshop. Here, we set all the development settings as you wish. There's no specific guidelines, but the important thing is to straighten it and do not crop it. So, open the first image, then take from file info, the date the image was taken, and the time is actually more important, and then name that one layer to that. You will see later why do we do it specifically like that. And then we go to the next folder. And we do the same thing. Except this time, we can just apply previous settings, make sure we straighten it, open it, and again, file info, copy, rename. Except this time, we take that rename layer, drag it to the first image, and while holding shift, release it. Shift causes it to be centered, centered inside the existing image. Next one, we do the same thing. So, we select all the layers we have created and go to Edit Auto Align Layers. Here we select perspective and make sure we mark geometric dist distortion. Okay. And when you do uh, a rectangular selection with a fixed ratio. For macOS, we want width and height to be 16 and 10. That's the ratio of uh, macOS's screen. Now, when it's at 50%, we select a part of the image which includes all the layers below. That's it. Image crop. Press zero to make them opaque again. And we see that they are aligned to each other with a difference in lighting. Once we have the images perfectly aligned and all the layers prepared, we can export the layers into separate files. File, export, layers to files. Okay, open the folder and we name it this. File type PNG 8, no transparency, trim layers and run. Once the export is successful, you will see that in the folder, this one that we just created, you get each one of those um, layers as a separate PNG file with the layer name as part of the file name. Our next step is to create the um, JSON file that describes what is uh, inside our dynamic wallpaper and all the rules of when what image will be shown. I'm going to open that folder in Visual Studio Code and create a file called wallpaper.json. That file will be a JSON array we define an array in JSON by making square brackets of descriptions for each files. So we say file name and the name of each file one after the other. You can right click on the file, copy relative path and paste. Now for each one of those files, we want to mark when exactly that file will appear. And the way we do it in uh, macOS dynamic wallpaper is by defining the azimuth and altitude of the sun at that point in time. And uh, from that coordinate all the way to the next coordinate, that image is the one that's gonna be displayed. 
So for convenience, there's a website that can calculate the azimuth and altitude of the sun for a given location at any point in the day. And uh, a link to that website is in the description as well. Google Maps, current location, then the date, time zone, which is your current time zone. In my case, it is GMT plus one. So I set time zone one hour and execute. What we have here is uh, the altitude and azimuth for the whole day. We can see in the layer name that was taken from the timestamp when the image was taken, when exactly was each image taken. So that one was taken at 6.33 a.m. 6.33 a.m., the close one is 6 a.m. And so we say altitude and azimuth. For the image that you want to appear as, uh, as the image inside macOS's uh, selection screen, you define is primary two. All right, now that we have the images and they are properly aligned, and we have the JSON file that describes the set of rules of when what image is shown, we will combine it all into one little nifty package. And for that, we'll use an utility made by Marcin Szczaczurski. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I'm not very good at Polish names, even though my own name is Polish, still not very good at pronouncing them. Anyway, Let's install that utility and start combining the images. MacOS uh, dynamic wallpapers come in HEIC format, which stands for High Efficiency Image Container. And as always with Apple, they prefer to use an obscure, even though sometimes it is a good format, but that nobody else uses. So kind of similar to Objective-C and a few other tools that Apple uses. Well, this file format is common only in Apple land, even though it was actually designed to replace JPEG. Anyway, we will use uh, Xcode and Homebrew to compile the utility. If you don't have Xcode, you can get it from the macOS App Store. And there's actually a version of Swift for Linux and Windows as well. And um, Homebrew, you can get at blue.sh coder and just install it based on the instructions over there. Uh, for Windows and Linux users, you don't need to install Homebrew. You just compile the utility from source. Once we have that installed, we do boot up magza chuski slash wallpaper. Pay attention that wallpaper is with double P. And then boot install wallpaper. In my case, it's already installed. In your case, it should install it when you type this comment. Next, wallpaper, minus i, the JSON file we just defined, minus o, the output file. Okay, we have the wallpaper ready and set. Now we take that HEIC file and uh, put it somewhere convenient. We go to desktops and screensaver, choose the image we just created. And now when I change the time, you will see that different versions of that image will appear for a different time in the day. All right, that's it. All right, that video took me a whole day during my vacation to make. So I really hope you guys appreciate it. I'm just kidding, I really enjoyed making it. It was fun research. And I'm sure there's many more videos like this coming, um, coming in the future. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to put a like for the algorithm to know to recommend that video to others as well. And uh, I'll definitely see you in the next video. Bye-bye.